Alright. Now, usually when I go on, we are live. I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share this onto a couple of my pages and uh, just get the, get the word out and get everybody in here. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this interview. So, but we're live on YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, and Facebook on ParanormalWarehouse.com right now. How exciting, Oh, huh? good Lord. What? Yeah, I know. That's not, that's not too much. <laughs> like, half a million people could potentially come and listen. That's all. Not, no big deal. Well, good thing I went to the bathroom beforehand, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> What's up, Dan? What's up, uh, David? Katie? Um, guys, when you get in here, if you could please share this video. This is going to be very informative. Very cool to be able to speak with Corey here. Um, again, Corey is a paranormal investigator from Maine who just recently purchased the original farmhouse from The Conjuring. So this is going to be a pretty awesome interview. If you guys have questions for Corey, feel free to write them in the chats, and we will try to get as many questions in this hour that we can and uh, you know, go from there. But I just wanted, I wanted to get Corey on the line because he's a, he's a good guy. And I've seen a lot of crap out there uh, in the in chat rooms and and feeds. Uh, people people are saying they know what's going on, and um, I just basically wanted to to, base, to get you on here, Corey, so we could talk a little bit about you, why you bought the house, and what your goals are with this. At the, you know, and uh, just kind of set the record straight with people so they know that uh, what what your ultimate goal is with it uh, at, at the end of the day. So, uh, without further ado, guys, this is uh, Corey. How do you say your last name? Heinzen, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you're from Maine originally, and you are a paranormal investigator, correct? I mean, I'm, yes. That is out there. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Yep. And you decided to buy the original Conjuring farmhouse um, that all the movies are based off of. And uh, just tell me a little bit about why you did that. What's your, what was your thought process in buying this farmhouse? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, the buying of the farmhouse, I mean, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, yeah. you know, me and me and my wife, Jen are like huge, huge history buffs to begin with. And this is, it's just so rich in American history, not just paranormal history. Like a lot of people know right. it's, and, you know, this, this was deeded by Roger Williams, uh, back in 1680. Um, John Smith was associated with this. Um, it's just, it, it's amazing, just the property itself. Um, but the reason we bought it, besides those, those two main reasons, is I when I started off as a young investigator, I remember standing on the outside of places and looking, looking at my checkbook, looking at my checking account balance, and then looking at what it, they were asking amazing for me just to go into these places. Itself. And I was just like... And I didn't belong to a team. Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't, I didn't have friends that were really involved with this. So there wasn't people I could really call to say, hey, you know, you want to go to such and such place or, you know, help me split the costs and stuff. And being up in Maine, there's not much up in Maine. So it was constantly like, hey, do I want to travel down to this location and roll the dice and hopefully I get in on the open pool, but at the same time, it kind of stinks because you know your evidence is going to be contaminated and stuff. So, you know, I just look back to those days and up to now, I I want to have people actually be able to experience things at a fraction of the cost of what some of these places are charging. Oh, wait a second. So, wait, for a fraction of the cost. So, like, I've been hearing in chat rooms that this is a money grab. This is a this is a you're, you basically bought this house you're letting ghost adventures come there and you're going to be charging thousands of dollars to have people come into your house and investigate so this is this is a, <laughs> this is a get rich uh get rich uh get rich quick scheme right get rich quick okay <laughs> um so for those people i'd like to them to look at my mortgage note and see how much i purchased this place for it wasn't pennies on the dollar it was four hundred forty thousand dollars now I want to know how the hell I'm going to get rich quick. Just take back what, what I would need. Look, I'm not good at math. I'm not even going to attempt this. But I would. I think I would need 440 <laughs> teams to come through at a thousand dollars a piece 
in order to just make back my money. That would be booking every single night for a year straight and then more into the next year. That ain't going to happen. Everybody knows that ain't going to happen. And and plus, this is my primary residence. This isn't like some rundown old asylum or something like that that somebody bought. This is where I live. So I already have the means of making making it work. So you know, you're, when people you, come you in can, here and you they can pay for it without oh, without having teams come in, you bought it knowing that you could afford to buy this house. Oh, absolutely. Like there's no business plan. There's no business plan attached to this at all. This is my I am opening up my private residence for people to come visit and experience things. You know, and all I ask is that they help me with the upkeep of the farmhouse. Like you ain't going to see me driving around in some you know, Mercedes, you're not going to see, it's not, it's nothing like that. I want to, I want to give back to a community that's given back. That's given a lot to me because as we, we all are in the same boat, like it's all nonprofit. Nobody makes money, you know, and everybody takes each other under their wing usually. And, you know, I want to, I want to help people that want to come out and do stuff. I want to help them, you know, get their feet wet a little bit you know and honestly you know the more people that come through the door and they they might catch like the the holy grail of all evidence right and if you catch that in my private home in my you know in my home i have nothing but you know awesome that that looks good on me it looks good on them obviously but uh, i mean that's awesome for me because it's 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 proving what we want to prove you know, we're all trying to prove the same thing. Right. So, so what, what do you say to people that say, man, you shouldn't investigate where you sleep? You know, did you ever hear that theory, you know, you know? Oh, absolutely. That's why I have another house up in Maine. So you have so you have your house up there <laughs> if you need to leave, if something happens. Yeah. If God something, forbid, if hopefully would, not, you know, but. Uh, yeah, knock on wood, no. But if that's, we're being, I'm trying to be a responsible investigator and stuff. That's why, like, my wife and kids, they come down for, like, a night or two. And then they go back home because regardless how people feel about the stories and stuff like that, I'm just trying to be responsible and take every precaution known to man. Um, I've been having a lot of people, like a lot of like older investigators, like people that have been on the scene for a while, come in and take a look and stuff like that and give me an opinion, like their opinion about it. I mean, hell, we still have investigators that... Keith and Carl Johnson. Keith and Carl Johnson were the original investigators at this location. And they can come in and they can tell me what exactly was going on and where they were getting stuff and how they were getting stuff. I mean, how many people can say that right now? Nobody. I mean, I mean this is this is kind of like a, a godsend because in a in a system where we're seeing buildings torn down and being taken away you're in essence did this to for the betterment of the paranormal field and the paranormal community to be able to come in and actually investigate this so this is this is awesome in, in my opinion because it's like there's stories based off this house uh, obviously what the family went through when they were there and it's it's been told from that perspective there hasn't been really any new investigations that have happened at this location in a long long time so to be able to no. open that up and and have folks come in and say, hey, this happened here, or this happened here. It's just going to make it that much more real uh, of, a, of a place for everybody, you know? Uh, and really, prob- I mean, has things happened to you already since you've been there? Like, have have you noticed anything creepy happening uh, since, since you've taken it over? Or are you kind of just getting used to it, the entities that are there? Is there a lot of them? I mean, what's, what's a, you got your family there, so. Yeah, well, the, the, first, the first night that we moved in, um, we actually had quite, it was quite busy. It was like the spirits were like, I, I guess for lack of better words, they were just, they were happy to see people. Like nobody had actually like interacted with them or actually went out of their way to like talk to them and stuff. And I mean, they were opening doors, um, knocking on things, uh, manipulating objects. I mean, it, it's been very, very busy, even during the day. I, and I mean, I say during the day because I think a lot of people, don't believe that stuff happens during the day and that's because they're so busy with their lives that they just they don't notice like the little subtle things that like the nuances little subtle nuances that will happen and you're like 
oh, okay, so somebody's here. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, we've been doc. I mean, this, the house is rigged up like Big Brother. I mean, we have like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just, it's recording. And basically all we do is we just go over, we go over evidence day in and day out. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a painstaking process, but we got some awesome stuff to show people when we're able to. And uh, I, I'm not a huge person for putting stuff out on the out on the internet because, like we were talking about earlier this week, people. Will, there's been so many people that have been caught fraud and stuff. Right. The legit, legit people are gonna, you know, we're gonna suffer regardless. So it's like I don't even bother putting my stuff out there because I'm like I'm gonna be laughed at, I'm gonna be ridiculed and stuff like that. Even though I have nothing to gain, I have nothing to gain, you know. So, no, I mean, you're just basically we one of have... us in the trenches, you know. You're after after evidence. You know, you're trying to see what happens when you die. Exactly. And uh, I think that's respectable, exactly. you know, uh, uh, as opposed to actually what is being said. You know, pe- I, I, love how, I love how people sometimes just jump to conclusions. They've never spoken with you. They've never met you. Uh, they, they really don't know what, what your ulterior motives are, but... But, but they can put out on the internet and social media that this is what you're thinking and this is what you're saying and this is what you're doing because this, 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 and this. And it's, it's farther from beyond the truth. You know, I mean, just coming from, uh, from an investigator to an investigator, um, you, it, this is kind of like one of the best things that anybody could ever do for the field to, to be able to open up a location that has since not been open for so many years and allow people people to come in and see what they can get you know i mean it's, it's great i mean i would love to jump at an opportunity to do that and i'm sure there's tons of people out there that are feel the same way you know and the other thing they're saying is uh um you know i know that you you signed a deal to do ghost adventures you know so which i think is great i mean ultimately you wanted to let people know that this location is out here now uh it's available for investigations and you want respectable people to come in and investigate it and what better way to to let people know that it's out there than to have it on the, the number one rated national paranormal television show in, in the country at, right now so i mean it's i mean I, that would have been a no-brainer for me as well um you know regardless of what happens or what they find or you know whatever means they do it's just a, a means for you to get that out there and let people know that you're you're here now and you're open and you and and um, this is going to be open for for everybody to come and check out, you know. So, I mean, that's, and that I mean that is the the main reason that you did that, correct? I mean, you you don't have a marketing degree. You're you're an army guy, right? Did you say you're a military guy? Oh no, I I took a I took an early retirement. Everybody's like, oh, it's twenty years. No, I took it at sixteen because uh, the marine was downsizing at the time. Well, thanks for your service, by the way, too. I know that you've served some tours over, and uh, I mean, it's it's great you were able to take an early retirement, actually and enjoy and so yourself. I I get full benefits as far as, my, but I appreciate. It. To be honest with you, like we've caught a lot of flack about what show we let in here and stuff like that. And to be quite honest with you, Ghost Adventures were, was the one that was very persistent. They were very, very nice. You know, they were the first ones to reach out to us and and ask about it, you know, and we didn't hear from anybody else. Like we didn't sign a contract with them for about a week and a half after moving in and we heard from nobody else until maybe a week after we signed with them so oh, this this that and the other i'm sorry but if you have a haunted location and you're you're offered the number one paranormal tv show their biggest episode of the year for two hours would you not do it if you were in my shoes like I said, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a no-brainer, you know. I mean, it's it's advertising. Exactly. That's that's what it is. It's. But. Well, that's and I, I, mean, I guess I just wanted to clear the I wanted to clear the you know, the thought process behind it. You know, like because I said I know that they're, 
they're the number one rated show. Um, you know, they have a lot of people that watch it, and there's you know, a lot of people in the field that maybe don't respect some of the things that they do. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is the number one rated paranormal show in the country. And if your goal is to let people know that, hey, we're out here, come and check it out, um, why not have it on the, that show? You know, I mean, if if that's what you have to do to get it out there, you know. I mean, just look at look at all look at how your phone's been blown up ever since they announced that, right? So, I think that it's I think it's amazing. I think it's great what you're doing, and I just wanted to kind of let everybody know um, the the. I wanted to let everybody know that there wasn't ulterior motives involved. Um, uh, the, the other thing I've been hearing too, um, I, I, and I quote, uh, this, this one girl quoted on a post that you're going to charge a thousand dollars a night for a team to come in to investigate the house. And, um, I, and I said, well, I've never heard him mention anything about money at all. You know, I haven't heard him mention in, in the time that I've spoken with you. I haven't, uh, even heard one thing yeah. about money. Um, like you said, you, you, you took on this responsibility knowing what you had to pay back. And uh, it's it's not going to be a it's not going to be a shit show for you. I mean, this has got to be respectable. This is a place where your family resides. So if a team's got to come in there, you know they're going to be. Uh, yeah, it's been nonstop. It's kind of get an annoying thing at this point. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I know your auto audio keeps cutting in and out. I'm not sure if there's a you know if it's a bad location where you're sitting or whatnot, but it's a uh, um, the, at the end of the day, um, you know, in speaking with Corey, uh, it's it's not a situation where it's it's going to be a money grab. He wants to make this affordable for people to come in and investigate. Um, I mean, tell them about some of the circumstances, like for for you when you had to go investigating and and having to try to come up with the cost to do it. You know, like I mean, this is one of the major motives of you to buying this house, correct? Because everybody's. Everybody wants to book. Every, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You you say it in your words. For some reason, the volume is not coming out on you. I'm not sure what the what the deal is. Are you on your computer or your phone? There, I can hear you now. It keeps the, the mic keeps cutting in and out. I'm not sure. Do you have an external mic or can you use the mic that's on the computer? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I I couldn't rub two nickels together back when I first got out of the service. Like, everything, you know, everything's overpriced. Like, gear, um, location. Can you hear me? I, I can. You're breaking in and out, but I can hear you. Do, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's the microphone or what. Uh, on the computer but you're I mean I did hear that you couldn't rub two nickels together and um, everything's so overpriced yeah I'm sorry about the audio I'm not sure what the deal is here um, if you do have an external mic um, maybe unplugging it and just using the microphone that's built into the computer or vice versa, I'm not sure. One thing now... I'm on my phone. The oh. computer's on. Okay, that's not, that's actually better. Um, I mean, one thing now that you'll have to invest in, since you're going to be doing lots of interviews, is a new headset, huh? <laughs> um, but... Jacked up. Yeah. So, guys, you know, real quick, I'll just, you know, when I was speaking to Corey before we came on the show, 
you know, he was talking about um, the cost of going into a location and going into, like, maybe, say, a Penhurst or a, a Rolling Hills Asylum. And uh, the the big thing is, for him, is he wanted to be able to open up this place and make it affordable for investigators to be able to go into and, uh, and respectfully investigate the location and maybe uh, go after some of the claims of the conjuring. Weird. It is weird. It's like it's like what's ever there is allow not allowing but, you to have this interview. No, what I was saying was, was uh I'd like to blame it on paranormal, but Yeah, well it sometimes happens when uh you're trying to talk and maybe some paranormal there does not want you to be able to speak. <laughs> Cuz I can hear the rustling going around. Investigate when I first got out. Um, like it's working earlier. That's so weird. It seems like it's working now. So I'm on. I'm on my phone. Okay. Well, if you are you using uh, yeah, somebody saying maybe it's your Wi-Fi, but it was working perfectly before when we were having a conversation. Before we even went live. <laughs> so, see if that works any better. Then, and we'll see what happens. I got to talk about. So, rough here. Um, yeah. Because it's horsehair plaster. It's so. Oh, you got the old horsehair plaster in there with the lathe board, huh? Yes. So it's like it's a nightmare trying to like we can't use wireless cams. Um, it, it's a pain in the butt. But, I mean, we're trying to make do with what we have, so. So you have the whole place wired? You have you have cameras running 24-7 in that yes. place? Yes. Um, is, is it something that you may consider yeah, doing, allowing, like break, allowing, like, a video stream of that for people to watch like we do with a lot of other uh, haunted locations? Is that something you'd consider? We've, we've talked about that. Uh, we've talked about letting people have access to the DVR. Uh-huh. But we have to figure out how to do it without people corrupting the the hard drive and stuff like that just to let them view yeah. view the camera feeds right, and right. stuff like that because we, we got we got 12 4k cameras running in here right now like we got lorex 4k and uh like it's it's phenomenal like the how Quality. clear it is i've never dealt with 4K before so well there are ways to do it so you you would have complete control of the feeds and only run them when you want them run so it's not being an invasion of your family's privacy you know so um, i can i yeah. can talk to you about that later but um yeah because it's the same thing with, with my house you know I, I run them when i want them to be run and some of the stuff that we've caught on those cameras you, you catch when you least expect it and uh, i remember the first yeah. time i ever ran one live on the on like paranormal warehouse we had like a thousand people watching and then all of a sudden the shadow figure just moves right through the kitchen of the house. And I was like, I fell asleep on my couch. And all of a sudden my phone started blowing up. And uh, I woke up to all these screenshots of the shadow figure. I'm like, holy crap, there's the holy grail the first time of running the running the cameras. Now, have you caught anything on the cameras yet to, so far? I mean, it's got to be tedious. That many cameras running through all that footage all alone? <laughs> Did your wife help you out? <laughs> Uh, she she actually uh, she monitors it from home. motion activated in some of the spots. Oh, nice! Like as far as like the doorways and stuff like that. So um, like just the height, like where it looks like you would have more activity and stuff like that. But most of the time, we're watching the camera system twenty four hours a day, seven days a week in the command center that we have set up in here. I mean, I wish I could show it to you guys, but because of the contract, like nobody's allowed to see the inside. Um, no big deal. Um, but it, it looks like NORAD in here. I mean, because if I'm I told my wife, I'm like, you're probably going to divorce me by the, by the end of this. Cause the Best Buy cards already maxed out and one of the credit cards are already maxed out, but I'm, I'm going to put this, you know, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it right. I'm going to document everything I can. So that's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're doing that, and I think that that's very respectable. And I think that after everybody listens to the to the interview, I think they're they're all going to think it's a respectable thing what you're doing as well. 
and, and I, you know, ultimately my goal of having this interview with you was to be able to allow folks to hear what you had to say and then when those posts come up and people start putting in their two cents thinking they know everything they can respond and say well I heard it from Corey on Paranormal Warehouse or YouTube or, or Periscope himself out of his words that's a bunch of bull and, and this is what he's doing so um, Ghost Adventures is going to be the first to be able to go in there after all these years and do an official investigation live on TV and that's going to be on Halloween night uh, how soon do you think before other teams and other folks could come in and start making like reservations to come in um we're hoping we're hoping to open up for for visits and stuff in november as far as um as far as starting to book and stuff like that i mean you know we just got to make sure because where it's a private residence and stuff like that we get there's certain other hoops and stuff we have to go through and i just want to make sure like all our t's are crossed and all our i's are dotted so you know, I just don't want to screw anything up for anybody. And, and I mean, like last night, what I was telling you about, you know, we had people try to rush the door last night for some strange reason. And that's the kind of stupidity, like, I, I'm not going to put up with. Right. And it's, and it's unfortunate because I put it out there in every, every interview I've done, whether TV, podcast, radio, what have you, I've, I've just, I've kindly asked, I'm like, look, please police your own. I'm like, if you know people that are laughing and joking about, you know, driving by and doing something and, and stuff like that, tell them not to. Because the thing is, is all, like I just said, I don't need to do anything. This is my house. I can make the payments and stuff like that. I wouldn't have gotten a loan if I couldn't make the payments. So it's like, I don't need to do anything for anybody. I want to do stuff for people. I want to have people be able to experience this place that's been shut off to everybody. But when I have dum-dums like last night, try to roll up here thinking that they're all that in a bag of chips i'm not playing that no i can't i can't play that if my wife and kids would have been here it really would have turned into a crapshoot i know it would have but luckily you know they were at home and we were able to deal with it on our own and i'm trying not to involve the police because they've had enough of this place um my neighbors have had enough of this place and you know i'm just asking people be respectful of my neighbors be respectful of the town um because this is there's the lose this is for you guys to lose i i don't need anybody here i want no. you guys to be I want you guys to come here and enjoy it but you need to be respectful of the town stop going to the sheba sherman's graves grave site and desecrating it stop you know stop knocking on people's doors asking stupid questions and stuff like that if you have a question Ask it on Facebook, ask one of my friends or something like that, but stop being a nuisance to people because it's, you guys are, people are already making a scene and it's going to go out of my hands like you talked about earlier, Dan, that, you know, the town can either love you or hate you. Right. And I don't want that. And the town's already talked to us um, in regards to being concerned about what's going to happen and stuff like that. And, all I can do is try to reassure them that's not going to happen. But yet I have things like that happen last night and people knocking on my neighbor's doors and stuff like that. It's, it's not going to work. So we need to work together and, you know, spread the word that, you know, help us out here. Yeah. I think that it's, I think most of the people that you're going to end up dealing with um, in the paranormal field are going to be the utmost respectable folks that you've ever dealt with. And, you know, they're, they're probably the same as you and I, um, there, when I first opened the Hinsdale house, um, there were the, the hoops that we had to go through. And I'm just telling, I'm, I'm telling you, try not to get so frustrated that you shut the place down. Um, there's going to have to be adjustments that have to be made. Uh, once people find out and know that you're living there, um, it's going to be a situation where they're not going to, they're, they're going to say, oh, there's somebody there all the time. We can't just go sneak in. Or I think, I think that's, that's the thrill seekers people, you know, those are the people that are the let's go break in and see a ghost. That's not going to happen. You know, you're there 24 seven. It's monitored 24 seven. So once people, the word gets out that you're there, um, I, I, and I think that's going to help a lot. And I, I think that just have a, keep the group small. Don't have, don't have it turn into like a big circus and, and you'll be fine. It's just, a, it is frustrating. I know yeah. it is. And I know what you're, know what you're dealing with, but, uh, you know, just have a little patience and work out the kinks. And I think come November, <coughs> 
people can start coming in, you know, and uh, checking the place out. And I know I'll, I'll, I'm looking forward to it. And I know there'll be a lot of people out there. Um, just, just a general overall consensus in the chat rooms are they're thanking you for preserving history. Um, they think it's great. Um, okay, here's I got some questions in the chat rooms here too that uh, they want to know. Uh, I saw one here, Chris. He wants to know what uh, was the scariest <laughs> moment in the house that you've had so far, if any. Uh, the, uh, the scariest moment that we've had in the house um, uh, the, so far, um, we've had these lights going off, um, just these random flashes of light. Uh -huh. um, they're blue and red. I've never, I've never seen anything <laughs> like that before. I like the little pops of green sometimes before that leads up to an event. Um, like it's like a, a electrical charge or something. I, I can't remember what somebody had called it, but this is totally different. The only time I've ever seen something like this was on a documentary that um, Chad, <coughs> uh, I can't remember his name, the American Ghost Hunter guy, Chad, somebody. Oh, yeah, out. yeah. It was uh, mm -hmm. Sir No Fate. Yeah. Uh, Sir No Fate. Um, these, uh, this Australian team was documenting these random flashes of light in these rooms where there's no light. There's no light bulbs. There's no flash bulbs. Nothing like that, and that's that's, you know, it's all over the place now in here. I mean, we're catching yeah. it twenty four. We just can't explain it. So it, it's that's pretty interesting. Neat. Yeah. Um, they they want to know with it being announced, <laughs> and I guess this this is a this would be a concern of mine as well. Um, Samantha said with Ghost Adventures announcing that they're going to be there on Halloween filming live. Um, is is the town getting involved? Is there going to be security? Is your I mean, is the road? How are you going to control the, these fans from coming there on Halloween? You know, to while they're there investigating. Uh, as far as them filming live for Halloween, um, I don't think it's I don't think live. Oh, okay. So it's not going to be a live. So because I think I think uh, the mis it's a misconception that it's going to be a live to air. They're going to be there live because they've announced I it as a live. Learned, I think they've learned the past two years with doing live events, you can't control what goes on during the event. Mm -hmm. And I think I think they're trying to stay stay clear of that. But don't quote me. Okay. Um, you know they could show me with something. So I'm I'm pretty much in the dark just as much as other people. I know a little bit, but I don't know the whole. You know. Sure. I'm just the homeowner, which is weird so <laughs> to say, but it's that's just how the business rolls, I guess. Yeah, I mean so. that would. I mean, if if it is going to be live, like they're saying, because I mean they announced that it would be a live to air on Halloween from your house. I can just even if it's not going to be and they pre-tape it or something else happens, I would just be concerned about uh, people showing up, you know. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure I know. Uh, they've had producers running around here and stuff like that talking to local law enforcement talking to the town halls and stuff like that so they might actually be you know setting up something to make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen so you know i yeah um, a lot of people are asking a question over and it might have cut out when you were talking before but why did you why did you choose ghost adventures as the team to I come in there i don't want to Um, the, the next team that approached me after Ghost Adventures was like two weeks later. Uh -huh. And it, it was like, it, it was just one of those things. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, put yourself in my shoes. If you're offered the number one paranormal TV show in the world, their two hour special on Halloween night, who's going to say no to that? And again, this is, this is new for you. Um, like, like we had said before, exactly. um, in order for him to promote the fact that it's even open for investigations and get it out there, you know, uh, at a, at a not, no cost to him whatsoever. Uh, he's, he's allowed, you know, with just that post alone, look at how many people have reached out to you already, um, asking about investigations because it's, it's, exactly. it's out there. So, uh, you know, it's a marketing thing guys. And, uh, you know, regardless how you feel about ghost adventures, or you don't feel about ghost adventures. Um, you have to look at the, the, the marketing aspect of having a number one television show at the location. And, it's, it, I mean, you guys all know about it. You guys have all read the, the posts that are out there. And uh, my, my whole point of doing the interview is to 
um, set the record straight on on his intentions. You know, it's 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 a uh, marketing. It's marketing to let people, teams, and everybody know that this is going to be open for investigations down the road at, in, starting in November, pending that everything goes through with the town and the neighbors and everything can be controlled. Uh, it's going to be a great place for folks to investigate and invest the claims of the conjuring, which is amazing. And uh, you, you can't you can't get upset about any you know can't get upset about that just because you don't like the show. You know, I mean, a lot, obviously, tons of tons of people do like the show. Um, so that's that. I mean, he's opening the place up. He's preserving history. He's allowing people to come and investigate the claims, and he's keeping it cheap uh, for for folks like me and you. Um, he's been there. He's done that. It's been a cost an arm and a leg for him to go investigate. So I mean, that's. I mean, he he opened this up for a chance for everybody to come in and investigate these claims. So I, I without that, that's just amazing, amazing in itself. So. If anybody has any other questions in the chat room, please feel free to ask them, and I will uh, ask Corey for you, okay? Um, oh, somebody somebody wanted to know if you heard about uh, changing Halloween, the date of Halloween, to the last Saturday in October, and they wanted to know what your thought was on that. <laughs> there, there, there's this new I, thing I, going around. Like, I, I would love that. I would, I would love that. I mean, it, it, make, it makes a lot of sense to do that, but... I mean, it's kind of late in the game to do do that. I think right now, but yeah, maybe for next year. Maybe I mean it would be awesome because I think it's such an awesome night. A lot of people, it, it stinks to have to get up and go to work in the morning and stuff like that. So, um, Trisha Dwyer in the chat wants to know if your your kid is scared to be there. I mean, I, as as a father, <laughs> as a father with kids. They all look. They all look up to me, and and I know how my kids feel about me paranormal investigating. So, um, how old your how old your child? Well, I got I got two. I say two kids. I got a daughter that's nineteen. Okay. And then my son's gonna be seventeen in a few days. So they're not little kids. And uh, no, they're not. They're not. Yeah, they're definitely like able to like make their own decisions. And if they have to run outside, they got to run outside. You know. Right. Um, but uh. My daughter is, she's been working a lot and she's up and she's getting ready to go back for her sophomore year of college. So she doesn't spend much time down here. My son kind of does, but he had uh, had an experience the other night and uh, he kind of cut his uh, visit short and, and went back home. So, you know, I don't, I don't hold nothing against him because he's been investigating with me since I really started doing it full time. And I know, the, I know the kid's got, some kahunas on him because i've put some i've put him in some pretty crappy situations that you know looking back it was pretty it was pretty bad of me to do but at the same time like i thought i was doing him a favor by making him a little bit tougher get him a little bit thicker skinned and he's been in some places that are pretty gnarly and are really really active but for him to actually tell me that something happened to him in here and it bothered him that you know that kind of bothers me because I feel like it's my fault and I'm failing as a father to take care of him. Right. Oh, and it wasn't like nothing. It, it just, I think the noises hearing the stories like right from Andrew and Roger Perrin's mouth. Right. Like, like got him very, very nervous over it. And you know, it would make anybody else nervous because the thing is people, when they think of the conjuring house, they think of the movie and that's it. It, you need to read the books. Right. If you read, I the, agree. You, you know, you would have a better understanding of what they went through because the books are actually scarier than the movie. <laughs> That's why James Wan didn't come here and film. Like they, they were coming here to film at the farmhouse. That had happened. Like they were going to film the Conjuring movie here, and James Wan read Andrea Perrin's books, and he was like, "Screw that! I'm not doing it." <laughs> he was. And he straight came out and said he was a chicken, yeah, chicken crap, whatever. I don't want to swear, but uh, he didn't, you know, and he said he had no problem saying that. And that's why they moved the whole production down to North Carolina because he just didn't want to, he didn't want to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's not, I, the, the movies aren't exactly accurate to the book, so. Um definitely no. save definitely read the books if you're going to be an investigator going into this location pick up the books read them 
see see what see what they say you know do your research before you go in know what you're getting into um, please yeah please do um, I have a question from Dan <laughs> Lafave down in uh, Texas he owns he owns a haunted location himself but he wanted to know what the square footage uh, of the of your location is he owns the old park hotel down in Texas oh wow um the square footage of this, I, I wanted to say, was 3,100 square feet. Uh huh. If I'm not mistaken, we were actually going over that stuff yesterday. I want to say it was just a little over 3,100 square feet. And that's just the farmhouse. We also have a barn. Um, I don't know the square footage on the barn. And then we have eight and a half acres as well. Wow. And there's a lot of activity out there. So it's like, it's kind of like a paranormal investigator's Chuck E. Cheese or Disney World. Yeah, it you sounds like it. it. Uh, how many room? Uh, uh, where did it? Diane Hilbert? She wanted to know how many rooms were in the house. Um, there's f- four bedrooms. Um, there's three three bedrooms upstairs, and then there's uh, a master bedroom downstairs, uh-huh. right next to the control center. So, I like that you have your own control center in there. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. Uh, speaking of control centers, Kyle Merriman. He's from Canada. He says. Uh, would you be able to ask Corey what's the best footage that you've caught on your camera so far, in your opinion? Uh, the flashing lights. The flashing lights. The flashing lights on. Yeah, the flashing lights on camera. We've also caught um, objects being manipulated. We we had. Uh, it almost looks like an old school cross stick, but you know, I'm. I didn't know what it was, but somebody had told me they they think it was like uh, something for fetching bread out of a beehive oven. Wow. It looked like a little stick. <laughs> so, but it had been sitting up against the wall, hadn't moved since we've been here. We've walked by it numerous, numerous times. And uh, a couple of days ago, one of the investigators was out there talking on the phone. And uh, you see it right on the camera. It just tilts over and slams up against the other side of the wall. You know, and jumped the crap out of him. He came running in. So we rewound it. Then we went in, started trying to debunk it jumping around on the wood trying to see what would cause it to nothing would cause it to move this house is solid which is weird you know for a 300 year old house well almost 300 years old it's a solid solid house and like there's really no give or anything with the floorboards or, or anything like that wow, that's, just that's good. pretty neat you know it helps out with the bunk that's awesome that's great um i have have you heard of madison Madison Paranormal Investigation, Jet Madison Smith. I have not, no. All right, so Maddie is a young paranormal investigator. She She's uh, one of the most, uh, probably one of the smartest uh, out-of-the-box thinkers that I've ever met. Uh, she's from Iowa, and she wanted to let you know that she's excited, and she wants to visit the Hinsdale house and your house down the road and do an investigation. But she's uh, she's a... Uh, just such a bright young aspiring paranormal investigator and uh um i know uh, it's 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 important for the field and for the the future of uh, investigating to have these kids actually take an approach like madison does when uh she goes into locations you know it's not just a shit show so if you ever have a chance to look up mpi check her out she would just want me to give you give her a shout out for you to check her out um kaylee renee she wants to know if andrea has been back to the house and uh, how did she feel about you uh, opening it up again? Uh, Andrea's been back to the house a, a couple times. Uh-huh. Um, she she came back to the house during the during the Ocean State Paracon. It was the first time she had been back here in six years, I think she said. And Roger was with her, so it'd been about uh, ten years for Roger, and it was just it was overwhelming for him. It, like it, I'm not like a sensitive kind of person like i think the only time i ever cried was when i i had my you know i had my two kids and uh during white fang i think i cried white fang kind of choked me up but um just seeing how much it meant to her and stuff like that being able you know being welcomed back to like where her home is right it it really tugged at the old heartstrings you know because it's you know Besides it being a historical location, the you know we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that what that family went through. Right, exactly. Um, and then you know, when it, it, that's awesome though. That's it's 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 nice to have her support too. You know. 
Yeah. So, um, the Samantha is asked if this is going to be your main business, or will you have other money to help renovate the whole place? The, well, the plate, like you said, the place doesn't have to be renovated at this time. This is a, any in, any income that comes in, you're going to use to help upkeep it, basically, right? Here and there, that needs to be fixed up, but nothing major. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's basically just upkeeping something that's very very old i mean it's it's a solid structure but you know in order to preserve it you know you just got to upkeep it and that's you know you know probably have to replace the roof in a couple of years i'm sure um the old owners did an awesome job about upkeeping it and you know keeping it like historically up to you know up to snuff on it so but we just uh you know some of the some of the things that just need to be upkept. That's that's all. No, we're not renovating anything. Like we're not tearing down walls or nothing. We're keeping it exactly the way it is. You know, Roger asked for us to do that. He's <laughs> like, you know, you're not going to change anything. I'm like, absolutely not. You know, <laughs> I'm like, no. you know, I didn't want to make him angry. That that's for certain. So yeah, he can get feisty when he gets angry. Oh yeah, he can. <laughs> Now, the, uh, Mary wants to know, um, do, you, do you think the hauntings are tied to the land? That's a, that's a tough one. Um, we've, we're trying to explore every avenue we can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've just, it almost seems like the Curse of Oak Island, except it's like with a paranormal twist right now, because, you know, so many people come to us or, you know, they write us letters and stuff like that about, Hey, did you know about this? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Because like this land, unbeknownst to me, this was like a huge piece of land that was used during the King Philip's War. And King the King Philip's War was a, a bloodbath. So there's who knows what could be out here. True. You know? So I mean, there's just so many avenues we have to go down. And I mean, we've been working with historical societies, um, cemetery associations. Uh, anybody we can really get in with and just try to get information but the problem is is that you're looking so far back you have a lot of records that conflict with each other sure. and it's it's really weird because you wouldn't expect to have conflictions like that back then but back then think about it they probably really didn't think about us worrying about it hey in I, the future. I know all about <laughs> it man trust me uh, trying to get the the history of the uh, Hinsdale house I mean it's uh I even screwed up, you know. I had wrong information and had to be corrected numerous times. So, uh, it, it it will happen. You know, they weren't the best record keepers back then. Uh, Pam yeah. Pam Ward Kissel, she wants to know how when was the house built? Do you have that? Do you know that information? Yes, the house was completed in 1736. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, it was deeded back in 1680. Now the original farmhouse that they were living in while this was being built is down the trailway probably about uh, maybe a half a mile give or take and there's still like you can see the foundation and there's still like a chimney and uh, we want to go down there and clean that out but right now like the ticks are so bad down in there yeah like we don't even mention that you know you know in the fall time hopefully it'll be a lot lot better for people to go down in there and look so yeah especially or, or the winter even too you know um, yeah, they don't get my go down here from what I'm told. So, Megan wanted to know, Megan Talbert, she wanted to know if the activity increased when Roger and Andrea came into the house, or was it just kind of a... How, how did that uh, work As out? far as that... It, it actually, it didn't do too much with Roger and Andrea, which was surprising. Like, me and my team were like, we were ready. I mean, we had everything rolling. We're like, okay, here it goes. Smart. And nothing like really nothing i mean like a few evps here and there but nothing like to write home about carl johnson whenever he comes in here carl johnson and his brother keith were the original investigators here um with their team pyro they were the ones that called the warrens in and that this is like the things that hollywood didn't talk about right you know you know they called the warrens in because they were a young team and they were like look this is kind of out of our league we need some assistance like most of us should do if we're in out of our league you should look to somebody that's been doing it a little bit longer and ask for it. don't ever don't ever be scared to ask for help but that's what they did you know and the warrens basically you know took the ball and ran with it 
But um, whenever Carl's in here, getting back to it, I'm sorry. Uh, so whenever okay. Carl comes in here, all hell breaks loose. I don't know what it is. It's 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 great. I mean, like if Carl <laughs> calls and says he's stopping over. It's like everything's set up. We got, he you know, has, we got. He has that effect set. on the place, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm like you can't, like, you can't fart in there without something hearing you. So that's um, just the way we like to go with it. So. Kevin Schmitz, he wanted to know if is it rated a historical location? Uh, for the town of Harrisville, it is. Cool. Um, it's not registered. It's not on the historical registry for the state or the country yet. Um, we're kind of working with people about how to do that because it's, I guess it's a very painstaking process, but we would like to like look into that because that's what it's all about is preserving the history of this place. It's easier if you set your business up as a not-for-profit you know, uh, to get those type of recognitions. But, uh, if you're not, yeah. it's a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, a... Hey, what's going on, Brent? Uh, Dan, Lef Dan from, uh, the old park hotel. He just said, he's curious. Can you ask Corey if his place gets a strange vibe to it when the sun goes down? Uh, our place seems like around seven thirty PM. It starts to change, uh, with feelings and sensations. To be honest with you, I've, I've never really noticed. Um, there's always like a there's always a certain like charge to the place, if you will. Um, I mean, there's certain like if you go down in the basement, there's a, there's a there's a section of the basement that there's a well, and you go down there, and it's like I I just thought it was because I was fat and walking down the <laughs> stairs. I was like, oh my god, I can't breathe, breathe. You know, I I, I got to get in shape, but it's just so heavy down there it's it's weird and uh like to the point like if you look down the well and you, you start to get kind of dizzy like it's I, I don't know if it's messing with our equilibrium or or whatnot but it's just it's like a whole different world down there but yet nothing registers on the emf like nothing wow. like nothing on the meters nothing on the uh tri-field meters i i don't know and hmm. the only other thing i've been asked is like could it be radon and we have radon detectors down there and it's not right and they're fresh batteries and stuff and nothing's registering down there so i'm like i can't explain that one to you you know maybe somebody will figure it out i'm hoping that's 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 a th that's the goal <laughs> uh sally she asks um she wanted to ask if if he or his family saw or felt anything paranormal like as soon as you got to the house when you were first looking at it like the first night did you get a welcoming uh, party? Night, yes, uh, the first night we were here, we moved, we signed paperwork around one o'clock on June twenty first, and we were here at three o'clock, moving stuff in. Wow! And one, and one of the most difficult doors to open in this entire place is like a little shed that leads into an in, indoor outhouse. That's not news, but it's it's really neat. It's real nostalgic, so they've always left it in there but that door opened up in front of my wife uh, my son and my daughter's boyfriend and they automatically went into debunk mode trying to figure it out like walking around it and stuff like that and there every every door handle in here has a is a latch like the old school latch where it like catches on the hook and drops up and down there was none of that opening up for some reason and that kind of set the precedence for what what we've been experiencing the rest of the times that we've been here so yeah and i just want to let everybody know i can see your questions if you're on periscope i can see your questions on youtube if you ask them there i'm keeping an eye on all of the streams that we have going on um so if you do have a question on any of the streams that we have going on feel free to ask it and i'll try to pluck it out for Corey. i know you don't have a lot of time left here but i just uh you know uh, we'll get a few more questions in and then wrap it up for you so you can get back to doing what you were doing. Um, for as, as far as um, have you had a thought process as, as far as like what you're going to offer uh, for tours? I know you had mentioned some stuff to me over the phone. You know, you wanted to have it for all different levels, but what are you thinking as far as tours go? What your uh, time frames, how much time are you going to allow people to come in there? Um, for the visits, what I'd like to do, like, I'd like to like for one night I'd like to have like an open like paranormal 101 if you want to call it that I know it's kind of generic <laughs> but 
j- just like one night for people that don't belong to a team. So beginners. Always, yeah, for beginners, yeah. Um, come in from like 6 to midnight, you know. So from 6 to 8, um, we'll sit down, break bread, if you will, um, talk about some of the gear, how to use the gear, go over some of the evidence that we've collected and stuff. And then um, from 8 to 11, or 8 to 11.30, depending, you know, how active it is, um, let them just go off on their own. Um, we'll have investigators like milling about, you know, helping people out, letting them, you know, you know, help them out if they need it. Um, and then try to uh, go through some of the evidence with them, show them how to go through the evidence before they cut out for the night around midnight. Um, and then maybe one or two nights uh, a week, I would like to offer it like for open investigations. You know, people, you know, people can come in here with their team or themselves if they're ballsy enough, I guess. Um, to you know, to, to spend the night if they want. Wow. You know. Uh, so yeah. you'll you'll have it open for for spending the night, just tours, everything basically. Yeah. Now, when I say spending the night, like I can't offer people to sleep here. Right. You know that. You know that's going down a whole different like avenue. You'd have to um, turn it into a bed and breakfast, I think, to do something like that. Yeah, and and the thing is, is people don't understand like how much hoopla you have to go through to, to do something like that you have to bring everything up to code and to bring everything up to code in a building that's been around since 1736 it ain't happening right so that's why i say you know please like you know we want to get people in we want to stop booking people but i don't want to book people and then all of a sudden i have to you know cancel that that booking because I, di- I didn't do something correctly, like with the town or something like that. You know, I just wanted to make sure everything is correct so everybody can enjoy it. And I don't have to stop somebody like mid investigation been like, hey, the town said, you know, no, because I didn't have a sprinkler system up or something like that. So it's there's a lot of, you know, and that's things I got to talk to you about because, you know, you've obviously had to go through this, I'm sure. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the other folks are asking, are you looking to bring in other famous investigators like John Zaffis and Nick Groff to maybe do some special tours or some special events up there? Um, would that be something you'd be open to doing? Oh, of course. John Zaffis has already been here. Well, yeah, obviously. He's a, he's, part, he's part of the family, but uh, maybe bringing yeah. him back to do an event or something. Yeah, he, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, open, I'm open to anything, to be honest with you, because it's, you know... If, if that's people's cup of tea is coming with like an event like that and stuff like that sure why not you know it's you know it's a good time i've i've done that a few times because it's it's just not bad on the it's not bad on the wallet and uh you know you, you have a good time you know what i mean so they they yeah i'm totally for it so cool all right well we got to wrap up here uh Corey, i want to thank you so much for the interview on setting everybody straight as far as what your intentions were with this place. I thought it was just very important to get it out there and, again, let everybody know, guys, this is not a money grab. Guys got a mortgage for almost $450,000, and, uh, you know, bringing Ghost Adventures is marketing, letting you guys know. You guys wouldn't even be complaining if if you if they didn't put a post up saying that the paranormal investigator <laughs> bought the house and uh and and he's opening it up for paranormal investigations thank god that they did because we wouldn't be even doing this interview right now so it's marketing guys the place is going to be open in november for paranormal investigations thank you Corey, for preserving the history of this location and uh even having the gumption to open it up to paranormal investigating and open up a new location because so many of them are getting torn down and uh, we're not able to get into them anymore so uh, thank you so much for for that, man. I appreciate it, and I know a lot of people will too as well uh, when they do have the chance to get in there and check it out for themselves. Um, one other thing: um, how will you start doing bookings? Should, what, what should people look for to know how to get in contact with you to book the location? Do you have that kind of set up yet, or how are you going to be doing that? Um, as, up, and just as we were re- getting ready to go live with it. Um, we were told by our lawyers we can't use the conjuring sure we had the conjuring house i was like well we added house to it so it's not a tra- it's not a trademark you know copyright infringement or anything like that they're like no you can't use conjuring at all and i was like that is 
kind of weird. I, you know, I live in the house that, you know, so mm-hmm. that's why it's. I called... wrote the Conjuring Story House, <laughs> or, or for the for the thing. So hopefully they're not going to get too mad about that. Whatever, they'll get over it. You know, they, they, they'll find me later, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, they'll, but yeah, I mean, so we're trying to revamp the site real quick. Um, but it's just just pay attention to the the Facebook group, uh, the farm on Round Top Road. Um, that's where we're passing a lot of information and stuff and goings on here. Okay. Um, what's the name of the Facebook group? Get, what's the name of the Facebook group again? Uh, the farm on round top road. Okay. There you have it guys. I'm just going to type it in and that's the farm on road. Uh, oh, thank you. the farm on round top road. Uh, for the Facebook group, guys. Uh, stay tuned with that. As soon as they get the website open, um, however they're going to name it, maybe right. maybe the 17, you know, however house or whatever, you know, uh, when, when it was built. Um, but everybody's going to know. Yeah. Everybody will know what this place is. So regardless of what the, the web page is called, um, you'll be able to go there to get the bookings done. And All right. You, man, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to have the interview here. And uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, you need to get in contact with Corey. You can always send me a message or send it through Paranormal Warehouse, and we'll make sure to get him the get him the message for you. Um, and then stay tuned to that Facebook page, guys. All right. Thanks so much, Corey.